Ready. Good morning, Sharptown family. This is Joseph Hambrick, live here from Sharptown Church. I would like to wish you all well and your families during this time. So this morning, we're going to be talking about pandemic worry. And so recently, I've had the opportunity during the state shutdown to do some shopping around and take care of some things that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to take care of. Uh, and so in passing, I've come across uh, some of you from Sharptown Church, uh, where we've had some conversations about some of your excitement uh, during this time. And so one individual in particular had expressed that uh, they were excited because they were able to do some of the things such as going to Marlton Park and walking around or working out. Whereas other individuals had expressed that they were excited over the fact that they were able to walk around uh, River Beach Park or some individuals were able to spend some time working on some house projects or some of the individuals were able to spend some more time with their families or to even spend more time with the Lord. At the same time, I've come across other individuals who've expressed great anxiety and frustration and concern in the midst of this circumstance. And so I've heard feedback such as, well, what's going to happen to me? Over the next three or four weeks, and you know, some people have expressed what's going to happen in the midst of being laid off from my job, or how long is this process going to take? Are we going to be out for six to eight weeks? Are we going to be out from 10 to 15 weeks? Hey, listen, I would like to take out some time to acknowledge the fact that I myself wrestle with some of these concerns. And so in the midst of this, I would like to encourage you with a passage of scripture where Paul the Apostle is talking to the church of Philippi, where he begins to encourage them from verse 6 all the way to 8. And let's listen to what he says. Verse 6 says, Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so Paul acknowledges the fact that because we serve a God that is great, because we serve a God who loves us, and because we serve a God who can take every single circumstance that we have in our lives and use it and engineer it for his good and his glory alone, that we have every opportunity to bring our burdens and our concerns and lay it at his feet in exchange for peace that surpasses all understanding. And so in other words, when circumstances in life don't add up, and when COVID-19 makes no sense in how we're going to get through this time, God can give us a peace that surpasses our natural understanding. And so Paul then goes ahead to tell us what our response ought to be instead of giving over to worry and doubt. Listen to what he says in verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And so Paul says that, hey, listen, in the midst of the circumstance where we have every right, to be upset. We have every right to be disturbed. He says, I challenge you, church, I global church, I challenge you to think about the things in your lives that are good. I wonder what some of these good things are for you, though. So maybe for, for some of you, good is being able to have more time to spend with your family. Or maybe good is being able to spend more time in your word or being able to do some of the things that you actually love to do. Okay? And so I want to provide you with with a tool that's going to help you create a heart of gratitude in your life. And so here are some action steps for you this week that you could take that can help you maintain a heart of gratitude. One, for some of you, it might help you to make a small list of some things that you could be grateful for, whether that's having food on your table, whether that's having clothes on your back, whether that's just being alive, okay? What are some of those things that you could be grateful for? Or two, what are some things that you can actually do that can help you maintain a heart or a posture of thankfulness. Let me pray with you real quick. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We thank you for uh, this time together, uh, for you to speak to our hearts this morning. God, we, instead of giving over into fears and anxieties, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for all you are. And thank you that you haven't left our side and that you are with us. We declare that we will no longer just give you the fruit of our lips, but we will give you the fruit of our lives. It's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Hey, listen, if you are a young adult or a collegian, Joey Rain and I would like to invite you to join us for a Zoom call tomorrow night at 9 p.m. I've posted some of this information on our college page, but if you have any further questions or concerns and how to contact us or how to jump online with us, please give me a call at 609-373-9015. And also, for the next few weeks, we will be posting devotions uh, on our YouTube page. Again, if you have any further questions or concerns, 
uh, please feel free to reach out to us, uh, 609-373-9015. Be blessed, Sharptown. Peace.